welcome to the first Magic the Gathering talk. We're going to talk about some Magic the Gathering. I'm here with Man of Dad, Nate, and we're going to go over, say, say hi, buddy. What's up? We're going to go over uh, our, how we, in how we are interacting with the game and our thoughts on it and talk about where we're at with it right now. Um, we're going to start with Nate, if you want to give a little intro about yourself, maybe how you started and uh, what got you to where you are. Of course. So, um, yeah, I'm Nate. Um, I started, really, you introduced me to the game when you sold me a deck. I remember it was a red and blue deck <laughs> way back in the year 2000. The whole deck is probably worth about 10 cents, but I paid $20 for it. <laughs> So I think we were in middle school. Um, that was uh, my first interaction with the game. Fell in love with it. We had a lot of um, good times playing back then, and we've just been kind of on and off ever ever since then. I think I really only started playing standard um, about ten years ago. Um, but we've been mainly playing commander. But since then, we got introduced to modern. And at this point in time, I play just about every format at least once a year. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at now. Right now, I'm, I mainly play Modern and Commander. Mm, Commander. Uh, yeah, I. Do you think Commander should be removed as like a format? I don't. I don't think it is a viable format anymore. It's not really good. It's actually bad. What do you think? Um, I, well, I disagree wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, I love Commander. I, I think uh, I think it's a great outlet on the game, um, especially on the casual side, but even the competitive side. Um, I've noticed actually now it's it's more difficult to play on the casual side of Commander because it's difficult to for everyone if you're in a pot of four to really have very similar power level type decks when everyone is trying to just be the best that they can be and play uh, quote CEDH decks then uh, I, f I see that it's a lot more balanced and everybody there's no hard feelings when you're coming in and trying to go hard but at the same time I love casual commander too and I think really anyone can play it only takes $20 to buy a deck and then or you just get some bulk commons and make a deck but then i was gonna say it takes more than 20 dollars to buy a commander yeah. deck. it's 100 cards let's be real uh <laughs> talk about the intro ones you know <laughs> oh there's the intro ones cost like 50 bucks if you buy a pre-con what are you talking about no i, I thought they only cost like 25 are you 20. crazy any any pre-con i've seen at like walmart will cost you like 50 bucks i'm not saying it'll be good but it'll be something I mean, you're not gonna give me start on the predatory nature of which the coach. Uh, <laughs> that's in that's in the later part of this. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm Thomas, uh, aka Idlegen on the interwebs. Um, I think from what what Nate just said, we we can all agree that Commander should be removed as a format. Um, and I'll just give you a little background of my history. Yeah, as he said, I sold him World Gorger Dragon for like 20 bucks with the deck and. Uh, he was playing like elves after that and played a lot of well wisher so i was trying to beat him i think i have fond memories of playing kithkins in my first tournament uh, in lorwin and that was a lot of fun uh skip like i don't know 10 or 20 years fast forward to now i started playing in when mh2 came out and is kick kicked a lot of butts man mh mh2 was fun <laughs> it was a lot of fun i really did have i enjoyed it uh, did my you wallet play, uh, did not. During... <laughs> what did you play during uh, modern horizons one no i didn't play during modern horizons one i picked it up as mh2 came out and and picked up uh i believe a box and I, in that box i got got me a ragavan two ragavans and i was like dude i got two love it first uh, monkey 
I love it first monkey. And I was like, I got two Ragavans. Like, I kind of need four now. And, uh, you know, I just kind of decided that, like, playing stuff, playing the most overpowered card in the set seems like a good idea. So, you know, it's, that's what I did. Uh, I got I got Murktide running, and that was my first deck. <laughs> the hard, Apparently one of the hardest decks to play well, um, as it would come to find out. And, uh... And we're, we'll continue yeah, with that into our next section for DreamHack Atlanta. This was the... DreamHack Atlanta was the RCQ, which could have qualified you for whatever the next bullshit that they have. You know, I didn't make it, so I don't know what the next step is. <laughs> um well, I think uh, you know your listeners, just based on how we talk, they can tell that we're kind of casual, and you know we don't even know what we were trying to qualify for. We kind of just went down there on a hope and a dream, and like, hey, we at, we're going to take one day off of work or a couple of days off, just go down there, see what happens, right? Excuse me, sir, did you just say casual? <laughs> I listen to like eight hours of podcasts a day. <laughs> There's, I'm not casual. I I live this shit, <laughs> and that doesn't make me any better. Listen to eight podcasts a day. <laughs> Here we are. Um, <laughs> it makes you much better. It doesn't make you any you better. It turns out it might make you familiar with a card or two, and maybe some. Not even an interaction. You're, it pretty much is for <clears throat> entertainment. That's what I've I've come to believe. Um, so DreamHack Atlanta, we can hop onto that. Uh, it was it was fun overall. I'll give it give it a seven. No, actually like six. <laughs> Getting there sucked. The traffic was awful. Uh, day one was like standing well, hold in on, the let's back up a second. So let's let's kind of take him on a, a journey here. Okay, let's go on our, this journey. Our experience. So you arrived at my house at what like? 10 o'clock, uh, yeah. 11 o'clock at night on Thursday night. So we headed to Atlanta's. Uh, it was about five hours away. And I mistakenly, um, <laughs> I have to admit, I'm not very good about uh, trip planning. So I kind of just picked a cheap hotel and <laughs> it was about 20 miles out from Atlanta. And in my mind, I was like, okay, 20 miles, 20 miles out, it's right on I-85, and it'll be, you know, 20 minutes to get to uh, where we need to go. It makes sense. <laughs> a, it makes sense. I would have done the same thing. On paper, it makes <laughs> sense. It's a little bit cheaper, and it's only 20 miles. We can drive it. We didn't know that traffic was going to be hell and terrible. Well, I, I knew it was going to be hell, but I didn't know how how bad it was going to be. God. Um. So... Yeah, so 20 minutes turned into an hour and a half. For the um, record, they should just nuke Atlanta, just the whole state. They just, just go ahead and clear it off the map. We don't actually need it. Remove it as a state. Uh, we don't need it. So we got there at, um, at 2 or 3 in the morning and crashed real quick. Of course, it was like Super CD Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Super CD Hotel. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't get people, mugged. <laughs> people definitely probably got murdered. There. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, but um, <laughs> but we left we left there, and on, this was on Friday morning. Um, you know, we oh left. Friday morning we step out of our hotel, and this other dude like two rooms down steps out of his hotel. He's like covered in tattoos. He's got like tattoos everywhere, like an eye drop, and like he just looks at me, and I look at him, and I just kind of like, are we about to? What's what's going on here? Is something about to happen? <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys and went on your days. Like, hey, we're both in this together. So then, the so Super then, CD hotel. <laughs> at the Super City Hotel. So then we went to Chick Fil A, and they sat down next to us. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm not even, jo- dude. I don't, I'm not even joking. He's that that guy and his oh, buddy sat down guy. next to us. Yeah, that was them. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so we drive there and. You know, I have, we both have different um, desires when we get there because I'm thinking, okay, there's last chance qualifiers. I want to try to qualify. I mean, what the heck? I got, I have a Pioneer deck. Why not try to qualify for the big thing? And, um, you know, they advertise that it's going to, as long as you go 5 0, 
um, there's going to be all these last chance qualifiers. There's just going to fire one after the, the other. At least that's my impression of it. Well, when I got there, it was, you know, when we got there, there was a gigantic long line just to get into the venue. Right. And um, so that took about an hour. Uh, minutes, an hour just to get in. I think like an hour um, and a half, man. I would say at least an hour. hour and a half to two hours. So then we went in and we went into the registry line and um, I waited there, I think, 30 minutes. We still were like somewhat early, I think. And then I got there and they said, OK, you need to go to this white banner and register over there. You can do it all online. Well, at that point in time, I think the mana traders crashed and they said, oh, actually, you need to fill out this deck list and go back in the where you just were, I look back and the line is, you know, it, it was an hour wait, oh essentially, just to get back in that line. So, <laughs> but it was actually pretty cool because I was in line next to this guy who happened to be playing Mono Blue Spirits and we were just chatting. He's like, dude, take, the, take this whole sideboard guide <laughs> and, and my deck list and everything. So he, he gave it to me and I definitely used that. But, um, so we were there I mean, long story short, for the day one for me, I was there about 10 hours, and I was really, I was ready to spend, you know, 200 bucks or whatnot to rapid fire these entries just uh-huh. to try to qualify, uh, but I only ended up playing two of them. And, um, how'd and you do? so, and my, my first one, I went, I lost the first round <sighs> because I played my bad blue white control deck, got ran over by Phoenix. And you and, just drop after that? After and, the... Well, you... You, you gotta go uh, 5 right? first loss, you gotta go five zero. So if you get if you lose, you get eliminated. Okay. So so essentially, I lost, had to wait two hours. <laughs> and this was for me, losing, immediately trying to go sign up. This is their uh, so quick it, launch option. <laughs> yeah, this is a rapid fire option. So I waited for about two hours um, to get into another one. And then I went... 2-0, I went 2-0 or 3-0, I can't remember, and then I got beat by Angels. Ooh. But it was just, you know, it was just an overall terrible experience. I don't know if it's just me getting older, I just hate waiting in line well, now. Well, there but... was that tall, skinny guy, what was his name, Ryan or something? You talked to him for like an hour, and that was cool. Yeah. He seemed pretty cool. But um, mine was like, <clears throat> going so standing in line, whip, yeah, that was fun, whatever. Um, I was like trying to trying to find whoever had this deck uh the phoenix deck i had some buddies that were supposed to bring a phoenix deck for me and like the first day i couldn't i couldn't find anybody that had this deck or get in touch with anybody that had the deck so well, you, uh, they gave it to me and then you couldn't find me <laughs> okay so it's your, so it's your fault <laughs> <laughs> anyway, first day I was like going there with a purpose. My purpose was to sell my most of my collection, my modern collection, because hmm. as I'll mention later, uh, four color is an ass deck for modern, and uh, I don't need that garbage in my life, that negativity. So I sold sold that crap. Uh, I I would say overall at about sixty percent, like sixty five on the beneficial side. And I don't really recommend it. I had a buddy that just recently sold his stuff to Card Conduit, and he's saying he got about 86%. And this is ballparking it. Uh, so I would probably send it to Card Conduit over going in person to try to give it to a vendor. Cause so you feel like you got... I feel um, like I got dumpster fired like pretty bad. Yeah, like I lost a lot of value out of my cards. So you can either be like Mangucci and just buy high and never sell, or sell out of what you don't like and just try to send it to Card Conduit, I would, I would recommend. Um, and that was day yeah, I one. I pretty much spent the first day trying to put together a deck. I did end up buying, uh, there was like 30% uh, extra cash towards buying a new deck, and of course, <laughs> of course I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, so I always wanted to play Mono Green and Pioneer, so I bought Mono Green. The dude, I'm like, how much of this deck do you have? Just sort of the deck. He like, brings back the entire deck i'm like all right sounds good so uh i think i believe it was about 2500 that i was trying to sell and then i got back about 1600 and then minus like 500 for the green deck so yeah 
I do think that they serve a good purpose, um, you know, if you need the cards. And they're going to have to, you know, buy low and sell high, right? They have to. Because everybody's there, everybody's trying to get, um, you know, what they want, what they need. I actually, I ended up doing what you did, um, uh, selling a lot of my collection or changing a lot of my collection on Saturday, which was... uh, so I was able to unload a lot of stuff that I know I was never going to use again um, to to kind of more pimp out my my modern deck. So what do you mean was, by pimp out? Um, I got all of the expedition shocks for um for four color. Oh my god! So uh, just so one really copy, nice right? Ones. Just one copy because that's all I needed for each one. That's sick. Not still not better than the uh, Infinity ones, but you know whatever whatever is your flavor, I guess. Yeah, whatever. So um, so I got that. I got a um, original foil Jason Mind Sculptor, and I I got a you know a couple more foils that I needed for the deck to make it fully foil, which was pretty cool. Hmm that version if now if, i'm playing elemental for <laughs> the elemental version which i i still don't have oh uh, i upgraded my solitude so they're all foil full art now so, <laughs> solitude so really nice. solitude yeah like, it's, it's i don't really like nice. playing against solitude i sold all my solitudes because fuck that card <laughs> uh so, i mean have you ever seen a more beautiful card though art wise I mean, it's, it does have some nice art. I'll give you that. I do like the art of Solitude, <laughs> but just the card itself is just AIDS. It's just yeah, AIDS. Yeah. So I don't want to face it. I don't want to play it. Just get me away from it. <laughs> so so that was day two. Day two um, <coughs> I sold my collection, essentially. And you, day two, you played uh, Pioneer, right? <laughs> uh, I, I did get in three matches of Pioneer. My first was... Oh, well, I played my mono green deck. I was absolutely dog water at playing it, but uh, you know, I practiced like into the night at our hotel, like when I could against myself, just trying to like do that stupid Karn combo and uh, Kior combo. But the first, the first dude that I played was like super awesome at the deck, and uh, he he had just run out through right. it. We we actually went to game three, and um. <laughs> I was trying to go do my thing, do my effing thing. He showed me about the Karn and uh, brainstoning the opponent's Karn. And I even did that on game three like he did to me in game one. I thought it was super cool. And um, he ended up getting me. I kind of gave it to him because like, we were sort of that green deck stalemate. We went to time and you know, I was like, this dude clearly knows what he's doing. I just kind of gave it to him. He's like, he, he's he's got it. Maybe he'll do something with it. Because I definitely am not going to try to struggle through this. Well, um, uh, are you going to tell them about what we did before we went into the uh, venue? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're <laughs> when you're going to have fun at some big event, you definitely want to pregame, like, a lot. And uh, did you end up – were you drink, were you drinking or was it just me? Because I feel like I was the only one drinking. So we're drinking before okay, we, we both did. That was day three that I was the only one drinking. Okay. Yeah, day three, that was only you. Because it was Sunday. We were going to get another Four loco, but uh, you can't purchase alcohol on Sunday morning. That's right. Uh, anyway, yeah, we did some pregame before just to you know make sure that we were acute and laser-focused, laser-guided to our mission of defeating all the neckbeards. Because that's what you do is inhibit your senses before going to play a very high intelligence game. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I think um, so. On the day two, I think that's when maybe I played. Mo- I can't remember if I played modern that day or on day three because uh, we were gonna try to get <laughs> we were gonna try to get uh, early get there early for the pioneer. RCQ on on day three on mm-hmm. Sunday, but we ended up even though we were thirty minutes early, we were still late somehow. Oh yeah, well, I mean when they charge forty dollars for a parking slot, and uh, that's bull. Because we that couldn't find parking. Bullshit, dude. We we're like, <laughs> well, they had the football game on the same day. Because like whoever 
decided to yeah. schedule all this crap has like a doorknob for a brain because this was just terrible. Fifteen dollars I thought was high, and then they're like, "Oh, it's forty dollars because of the football game." Like, oh my god. Yeah, you gotta have money to come to these cons or the yeah, yeah, these, yeah, these events. That's for sure. You gotta have money, and it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna cost you money. You can't just like this isn't this is a luxury thing to go to. You can't just <laughs> well, poor man. Welcome it. to the real world. <laughs> yeah. I will mention uh, also on, on day two, I, I did uh, qual I did get in the queue for Quick Launch Pioneer, Quick Launch Pioneer, and I ended up waiting two and a half hours for that shit. So uh, fuck the organizers because oh. they really, man, that shit was stupid. <clears throat> that really well, turned me off of the whole thing. Yeah, you you're you're not looking to go back, even I'm, if you got. No. Uh -uh. I I can guarantee, like I mean, I know I don't really, we don't really care at this point but i think even if i qualified for um you know the one that's in california i don't think i definitely wouldn't go just because <laughs> it was such a miserable experience um it was honestly. terrible it was um, terrible i think i mean and again dream hag that was their first ran event so maybe they'll have better things to do i just know like back um back in the day when star city games had their um organized when they were running it they had uh, really good side events, really good quick launches. Um, there, there was um, a lot of fun to be had. Uh, not much downtime, not much waiting around. Do you remember that? Like no. back a year or two ago. No. We went. We went. We took that one day trip up there. Oh, to Virginia. To uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that was that was cool. That was cool. That's when I got my uh, four Renix Renix sixes. Yeah, I still have those. Yeah. I didn't sell those. <laughs> it's the most powerful car, card in modern other than <clears throat> Ragavan. But so, I will, yeah. I, but I will say, out of all of the Dream Hack, the most fun that I had was at the end of Sunday playing uh, competitive EDH with uh, those three other three other guys. So I was lucky enough to get in um, a pod with three three friends and. Uh, we were just jamming some games. <laughs> they even put me in an awkward situation. They're like, "All right, who who do you think's the worst out of us three? <laughs> 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 yes. I was like, I, "Obviously, it's you." <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, cool it, it commander was a lot of fun. story. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you. Had <laughs> yeah, fun. It, it, it was a lot of fun. I did bet you um, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't play for anything, but you know, it is uh, what it is. All right. Um. Yeah. So that's that's DreamHack. It it was fine. You know, did the thing, checked the checked the thing, got the T-shirt, and uh, don't need to go another one of those for about two or seven years or ever. Yeah. So, <laughs> what's the percentage chance that there's one in the southeast again, within driving distance? You're gonna go? Oh, God, probably zero for now. Just until further <laughs> notice, man. Just fuck that. Like all around, fuck that. <laughs> uh, uh so what do you what do you think now let's go to let's move to modern pioneer the state of the formats that's the two that i play that i enjoy the most um what, what about you what do you think what do you think about the state of magic uh right now and the formats that you enjoy <clears throat> well i mean there's a there's a lot of questions in there where, where do you want me to start why don't we why don't we just like the state of the game, what do you think about what's your favorite? We'll start with what's your favorite format. My favorite format, like I said before, is it's a mixture between modern and commander. Okay, so commander's number one for you. Um, like it just depends. I mean, for competitive, I like I like uh, modern. But for fun, you like commander. Yeah, you know, okay. just having people over, playing some games, I think. Um, I mean, mainly because, uh, like, back, at, I would say, like, five to ten, five, seven years ago, I would have people over, and we would just jam modern games. But for some reason, a lot of people now don't just like jamming games uh, <laughs> modern. Maybe it's the decks that I like to play. Um, so Control maybe they don't decks? like to play. Against... <laughs> yeah, like I like grinding, grindy decks. So, 
um, whether that be elementals or or whatever else. But um, but I also think um, there's a lot of as far as moderns concerned, um, I think there's very powerful sideboard cards, and um, which is kind of how modern has been for a long time, but it, it's it's pressured in a way like that's one of the reasons why I think um, Ragman's kind of bad for the format because let's take for example Cascade right Cascade that you can have a very specific line of sideboard cards for Cascade for example like um, Chalice of the Void um, and various other things but Really, Merktide. I look at Merktide as almost like a combo deck because you have to have an answer for that turn one Ragavan. If you don't, it's just going to run away with the game. At least that's been my experience. Especially if they're on the play, they go turn one Ragavan. You don't have an answer. Now they hit you, and they're up. They're up mana and card advantage, and they're just waiting on the counter spell. They just counter whatever you do. Mm-hmm. That's how it goes. <laughs> that, that's been my experience. It's like very snowbally. I think, I think people don't really like snowbally type games. So, um, and I mean, I prefer games that go back and forth. So that's that's why I, I play the decks that I do. Okay, sounds good. Um... Yeah, I mean, I mean, overall, I think Magic's still in a good spot for modern. Like if there was a, I would definitely want to go to any modern tournaments available right now because I think it, I think it's in a good place. I still enjoy I think, modern. I still enjoy the idea of playing modern, <laughs> even though it's kind of like a block constructed. Um, you know, there's a lot of powerful cards in modern, but I think that's I think that's kind of good. I used to be on the fence of like, oh, you know, why should they introduce all these products, but I do think <laughs> I think they've helped modern's format in introducing these powerful modern horizons cards. I think so. I agree. Uh yeah, I'm fine with the block constructed thing. I mean <laughs> I did have a lot of fun playing it. It's just you know, I kinda wonder about how Modern Horizons three is gonna be. Is it gonna be that Lord of the Rings crap? So we're gonna have like <laughs> Frodo as like the new Ragavan or some shit. I mean, what's what are they gonna do with that? That's that's crazy. Or Gandalf's gonna be the new, you know, like yeah. Fury or something. Or uh, <laughs> how's well, that I gonna did... work out? This is crazy. Well, you know, even though I really like what Modern Horizons did with the format, I did like it back when Standard was printing cards that were powerful enough to make an impact in in modern like uh feel of the dead and uro things like that because mm. you'd have to look you'd have to look out and see what is good in these standard sets like right now i don't really care at all what's going on in these standard sets until um, something goes into modern and then you're like damn i missed that one yeah let me just buy four copies and then like fable the mirror breaker or whatnot and right um like I like that kind of introduction to to cards rather than just let me just print uh, you know forty busted cards in one set. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't want to care about standard though. I feel like it's out, and I don't want to have to care about it. I, I hear it's the best it's ever been right now, but I don't want to care about it. It's another thing like to put money into standard. And knowing yeah, that your well, deck's gonna roll out in six months or eight months, like that just is a bad feeling. <laughs> well, we're also not in it, right? <laughs> I mean, like if we were going to IQs every week and you had a standard deck and you won a hundred, two hundred dollars in one weekend and you paid for your standard deck, I mean, to be worth it, right? If you were consistently in it, but we're just not. We're just yeah, not if you're in consistently it, right? in it, yeah. And and there's not really paper standard tournaments right now because everyone's of the same mindset of oh, why should I buy this if it's just going to rotate? Mm-hmm. That's okay. the damn truth. We're okay with doing it with modern, but uh, we kind of fool ourselves because <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of cards rotated out whenever Modern Horizons two um, 
was played. It seems like a lot of the good. Modern Horizons 1 are still played, though. A lot of them. Yeah. Force Negation, uh, the, the green one, the green force, like, a lot Vigor. of, yeah, the four, green force, the Vigor, all that crap. Like, a lot of stuff from Modern Horizons 1 is still being played. Yeah, but hey. what happened to Urza, though? You know? Urza oh, was a big... Yeah. There's a scene in but, uh, Legacy, right? He's playing Legacy. Yeah. I mean, one of the good things I really liked about Modern Horizons is the printing of answers, and that's one of the one of the things that I kind of dislike about um, Pioneer is it just it feels like every deck is a little mopey, and I don't know I don't know why it just it feels frustrating, but Though I say that I really like the Mono Blue Spirits deck, and uh, Blue Eye Control is still a decent deck. I think if um, but it's one of those things where I'm having format ADD, and being a a working professional, I just don't have time to keep up with everything. So there's so many sets um, you kind of or so many formats you just kind of have to pick one or two. And well, in our our local scene is really taking off with legacy like pretty much everyone plays legacy yeah you know I, I went to fnm this past week and modern had seven people legacy had 19 to 20 well yeah it was crazy. i don't want to get into legacy man i just ugh, <laughs> i just don't want to i mean just learn another damn format i know you can i know you can proxy them and you know for cheap like you can just play what you want and then and that's cool and it should be like that because i i'll be damned if I ever buy an actual legacy deck. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so, how about that Luris, though? The Luris ban, and then the four color pretty much got banned. I don't know if people still play Karuga in four color. Is that a thing? Is is uh, Respect the Cat playing it or whatever? I'm sure he, he probably still is, right? Yeah, I mean, Lurus and Yorion both getting banned. Um, I think it's good. I feel like they should just get rid of all the companions. I kind of wish they did. Um, even though I still, I really like Kahira. <laughs> but essentially, Kahira is like pay three mana, get it to pitch to a solitude, <laughs> you know, in control decks. And yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's a finisher every once in a while. But um, sometimes it does work. I don't know. Like, I mean, Vigilance I is nice. Yorion, it was very interesting because in, you know, I played this deck. As soon as the four color deck won a challenge, I'm like, oh man, this is my deck. <laughs> I, I love this deck. It grinds. It's good. And people were telling me it's like crappy deck like the whole time for like a year almost. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I, but whenever it started getting popularity, I I stopped playing it because I don't like playing, I don't like playing against the mirror match. Yep, and <clears> but going um, to time is dumb. Yeah, well, Fuck and shit. and the thing is, what people don't realize about um, the four color deck is sometimes you really need to hit your sideboard pieces. Like you really need if you're going against burn. You really need to be able to ramp out that Omnath fast, or have a counterspell, or, or whatever else. Or you just die. Um, you side in counterspells for <clears throat> red? Are you keeping counterspells for red? For uh, you like Flusterstorm and things like that. Yeah. Okay. I can or see Or Force that. of Negation. Um, you know, usually you don't. Um, you keep in some because just everything else is bad. Really, you're just trying to get to Omnath and pray. <laughs> Force but, Negation um, of Oros Charm, maybe? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, most of the decks didn't even run that sort of thing. They just ran um, regular Counterspell and Creatures. Oh, okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> but, I mean, I honestly... My four-color deck did pretty well against the other four-color deck, even though I was playing Kahira, and I was typically better against the combo. But, um... My my deck had a weakness, and that was uh, a dash dragavan. <laughs> I, I just kept losing to that. So uh, I guess you didn't have any way to deal with it. 
well the four the four color deck I'm um referencing is, is the one that top aided Vegas I think a year year and a half ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it didn't have anything to really combat a dashed Ragavan except for like blocking it with Omnath or or like an, uh, you have Tick to Fairy and Prismatic ending it or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so, that's a lot of steps. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot of steps. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. All right, well, let's move on to the last part. Um, I'm just going to yeah. go ahead and... <laughs> after listening to 2,000 hours of podcasts, I have a couple of words I want to give out. <laughs> Uh, the most entertaining podcast is Dom Harvey and Ari Lax's Dominari's Judgment. It's my favorite one. Uh, to the, the most toxic award goes to Arena Decklist with Jerry Thompson and Brian Gottlieb. Heart of Golden Jester Award goes to MTG Goldfish with Seth Krim and Richard. And the worst ad segment that I skip every time award goes to the Dive Down. And uh, I really can't remember any of their names, but you know I'm glad they play Rhinos. God bless them. It's a good deck. What, what kind of ad <laughs> segment is it? Like, You're gonna have to it's... check it out, man. You're just gonna have to go check them out. It's it's a good podcast, but God dang it, I hate that ad. And I just like, all right, we're skipping ahead like ten minutes because I I can't stand it and I cannot listen to it another time. It's like. It's like listening to fillers in Naruto. I just want to shoot myself in the face. <laughs> Wait, do they play the uh, like middle of the episode? While In the middle of the episode, play? man. I pay, you know, I pay for premiums for Spotify, so I don't have to listen to ads. And they put the ads in the episode, and I just want to like throw my phone across the room. Well, and the then podcasts gotta make their money, so yeah. But nobody else does that. Like, there's, you know, they're so like skeevy that they gotta put that shit in there. It's just annoying. And then the last is the best intro award, which goes to MTG Grindcast with Chris Castro Apple and Lee McLeod. Uh, they have a very nice little jingle at their at their intro, and um, and they just seem like real down to earth guys. On top of the fact that they're from North Carolina, and I believe we could get a beer and like hang out and just talk to them. They seem cool as shit. I would tell you they're just they're they're cool as shit people. So so good people. And cool, uh, yeah. Well, Nate, I appreciate you being on here, and I just want to mention that Commander probably should be removed as a format, and I believe that's it. <laughs> right, man. You got nothing to say? You, you agree? I disagree, but uh, you know, you're you're allowed to have your own opinions. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.